Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, author of Visualizing Happiness in Every Area of Life and host of this podcast, Incredible Life Creator. And today I have Robert J. Moore on with me today, and um, he's been on before. Hey, Robert. How are you today? I am great. I'm very excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. But before we do, I just wanted to read your intro because you got a lot of stuff going on, so I have to read it. So here we go. <laughs> Robert J. Moore is a member of the Forbes Coaches Council featured in Forbes and Disrupt Magazines, internationally awarded bestseller, founder of Magnetic Entrepreneur Inc., which consists of Magnetic Entrepreneur TV, speaker, business coach, and a publisher with over 160 published books and a recognized publisher with Ingram, working in one of their top programs, Lightning Source, a Guinness World Record holder and nominated for Walk of Fame, won the honorary doctorate degree two times and has impacted the lives of many through the work associated with Magnetic Entrepreneur. Robert has impacted the lives of many through the work associated with his international award-winning best-selling books, Resilience, Magnetic Entrepreneur, and many more. Robert has even co-authored with Jim Rohn's 18-year business partner, Kyle Wilson, and World Series pitcher, Todd Stottlemyre, Les Brown's daughter, Serena Brown Travis, Reggie Rusk, retired NFL player, Dr. Joe Vitale from the book and movie, The Secret. Robert has hosted many events with his brand, Magnetic Entrepreneur Author Awards, Magnetic Entrepreneur Guinness World Records Attempt, High End Mastermind, which allows his students to reach the levels they could only dream of. Magazines have been interviewed Oh, Robert has been interviewed in magazines from around the world, national TV programs, radio shows, and has also been invited to speak on world-class stages with Jack Canfield, Les Brown, Bob Proctor, Eric Thomas, and Douglas Vermeeren. Robert J. Moore has studied 52 of the top achievers in the world in the past de decade to build his multi-million dollar brand. See why I had to read it? <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot in there. It's pretty juicy. I mean, I got to admit, I mean, uh, I've done a lot in the last 17 years. It's only been 17 years since I've been clean and sober. You know what I mean? But it's actually been Magnetic Entrepreneur. The brand itself has really only been around for five years, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Wow. So for people who don't know you or haven't heard the first interview, why don't you give us a shortened version of where you started out? Because it's only been the last 17 years. So what was happening before that? Before that? Oh, oh yeah, the juice rolls out. Okay, here it is. I mean, I was a badass. I was a drug addict, alcoholic. I was doing whatever I can to get that next drink or next drug. Uh, I ended up at 13 years old, started drinking OV. And it was the worst shit I ever told you in my life, the stubbies. It was like sandpaper when it went down. But, I mean, when you let that belch out, you start feeling invincible. You start feeling like a new person. You start feeling like, oh, well, I, I could do this now. It gave me courage. So we call it liquid courage. So I was an alcoholic for a lot of years. And the problem is, though, I wanted the fast cash. Uh, I wanted the women. I wanted the drugs. I wanted the alcohol. And I wanted to be able to do things. And the way I found that void was hanging around people with organized crime. So when I hung around with the people with organized crime, they gave me everything I needed because at home I felt like I didn't fit in, right? I was always getting grounded. I was I was brought up by, with a stepmom and, and my father. My dad was always working, trying to put the food on the table. My stepmom was always, always hitting me and throwing things at me, hammers, stabbing me with a fork. What's the rush? What are you eating so fast for? I'm hungry. That's why. <laughs> but at the same time, she didn't realize that. I'm a fast eater. I still eat fast. But every once in a while, I'll look at my hand and my wife will say, what are you looking at your hand for? So I explained to her later on, years later, but it felt like I, I got poked. You know what I mean? Because she used to stab me all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? I did 17 years in jail. Literally, 17 years in jail. I had enough. I, I ended up with a 12-inch a, a blade in my gut. I got 44 staples going all the way down because I didn't want to be around these people no more. And lived on the streets seven years until I got clean and sober. And then when I got clean and sober, I decided, well, let's go get educated to find out why I'm being the asshole I am, right? Or why am I being the person that I'm becoming? I didn't like that. I don't like the feeling. I was very angry. 
So I went and got my grade 12 and it was weird because I was in, in school with people 15 to 20 years junior to my age. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about parties and you're trying to be sober. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? So it's like, oh man, do I get into this uh, war story stuff or do I just leave it? So I just left it. I said, I'm here. What am I here for? It's like going to a barbers, right? If you go to a barber long enough, you're going to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if you engage in that story, you're going to be where you're going to end up. You're going to end up back in that, that uh, storytelling and drinking and whatever. So I just let it be. So I went and got my social service worker diploma after that, my addiction degree, my BA in psychology, my master's in counseling psychology, my harm reduction, mental health crisis, two honorary doctorate degrees. And uh, I, I said, okay, after being a therapist for 15 years and a drug and alcohol counselor, I was wearing my heart on my sleeve too much. I was starting to give in. So I said, I can't do this. Man. I, I'm starting to become broke and it's hurting me. It's killing me. And then next thing you know, I said, you know, how about I utilize those things and help upbrand other people now? Yeah. And that was the ticket. All of a sudden I changed my name from, okay, it was the better way back then. I was looking for a new name. Couldn't figure it out for the life of me, what name would stick. It was just one day I was with my dad and I, I started talking to people, right? Because my dad says, you're always talking to people. People are always coming to you and telling you their problems. Why? What is this? Do you know these people? And I said, no, dad, it's just a profession I'm in. It just attracts them or something. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he says, you're like a magnet. And I said, magnet? I mean, it took me about two days. All of a sudden, we're at the, we're at the, the fire pit because he was camping. And a uh, guy come over and says, hey, what's your name? I said, Robert. My dad says, oh, that's my oldest son. He's like a magnet. Every time he talks to someone, man, he attracts everybody. And he goes, oh, what do you do for you? And I said, I'm an entrepreneur. He goes, oh, magnetic entrepreneur, eh? <laughs> And that was, that's where it started. Bless his soul. Now he's deceased. But I mean, it took off. It went mm -hmm. worldwide after that. <laughs> that. That is so cool. And I want to back up on your story just a little bit, just because there are many people who are suffering with addictions, whether it be alcohol or something else. And a lot of times, does it have to take a decision? What is it that helps people to actually pull out of that, the ones that do? They have to want the help. They have to want to change. I mean, for instance, today, I mean, for the last two days, someone's been stealing off my porch and I got cameras, you know, and it just so happens that this person was a woman and I could see her plain as day who it was. So then I told three or four of my neighbors, let's keep an eye, the neighborhood watch kind of thing. Let's keep an eye and let's, let's confront this person. I don't want the stuff back. Obviously, there's addiction there. I obviously want to let the person know, hey, if you need the help, let's get the help. You know what I mean? Let's see if you need the help, but at least get it off my porch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't pay for stuff for you to take. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> it gets a little expensive after a while. You know, I'm buying something 75 and you're selling to the crack place for 20. I think it's kind of expensive in the middle there. Mm -hmm. So they called me and I actually went up there and you could see the person. They were stolen out of the tree, sleeping beside two houses. So I, I did the right thing. I just called the police and said, listen, let's get her the help she needs. Um, I don't want to charge her. And they talked to her. They knew who she was. She was from town, but the other side of town, mm -hmm. which normally they don't come on this side of town because it's more expensive on this side. Mm -hmm. and, but they figured they, I guess they figured the opportunities are a little different up here. So we let her go and uh, she, she knows that where the help is if she needs it. Mm -hmm. If someone was to say today, listen, I need help. They got to physically inside me. They can't do it for other people because then they're just trying to, uh, to fill the void for other people. And you're going to go right back to it. But if you don't sit there and say to yourself, like fill that void. And look, I honestly want to get the help. Those emotions I'm telling you right now, the emotions that come along with it, where you're using when you quit, they start thawing out. When they thaw out, I mean, it gets it gets pretty dangerous. I mean, it could be suicidal. It could be, I mean, there's some serious stuff that people are hiding. See, when I work with people, I don't bandage this shit. I, I don't care what I say to them. I tell them straight up forward. I go to the core. I don't care if I hurt their feelings because I want to get to the core of the issue. I can deal with the emotions later. You know what I mean? And and that's I the only problem is I couldn't save three of my brothers. Two thousand and one, my one brother died, my oldest brother, drugs and alcohol. Um, two thousand and fifteen, there was a drug overdose for my other brother. Two thousand twenty, my other brother died in overdose. And then I just had another one who's in the penitentiary for drugs and alcohol. He just had a heart attack 
but he's alive, but he can't afford the medication to have the triple bypass in order to in order to have the surgery. So I said, I wish I would have known. I, I would have paid for the a year's worth at least of medication to the pharmacy. Mm. You know what I mean, but nobody told me so. Exactly. So people just have Definitely. to have, need, they have to want the help. Doesn't matter, you know, how their family feels or anybody feels, they have to be the one. To do I, it. listen, I, I went away when I went to the detox center, I went away for the recovery and I didn't talk to my family for two years because every time I talked to them, it was crying wolf to begin with. Mm -hmm. All right. So when I cry wolf, it was like, well, we're tired of hearing it. Just show us. Mm -hmm. So I didn't talk to them for two years. And by the time I talked to them, I was in the social service work of the, pro the program doing my addiction degree at the same time. They're like, seriously, what? Pardon? <laughs> you know, and he was like, really? And I said, yeah, I'm telling the truth. I, you know, like, it's hard to tell. Okay. It's hard to sit there and say, I'm telling the truth to them. It's just like when someone's, someone looks around and they said, uh, they have a purse there and you're trying to be sober and you used to be a thief right? To get your own way. It's like they have a purse there and all of a sudden, they're, oh, I'm missing something. I'm, I'm missing 50 bucks on my thing. Where could it be? It's, and all of a sudden you feel the guilt. Mm -hmm. It's like you feel you feel like everybody's staring at you. I mean, because of your past, but in, you're the only one feeling it. They may not be accusing you of it, but man, you ever feel it because it's it just feels so like, whoa, I got busted again, but I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's amazing what it can play on you if if you allow it to. But the thing is, it's harder coming off. I actually found it harder coming off cigarettes than I did drugs or booze. Believe it or not. But that's just me. Um, you got to believe in something. And, and I'm not saying believe in God if you don't believe in God. But, I mean, God is good early direction if you look at it that way. It's an easier way to put it, to make it softer on you. I, I use the, the programs out there, NAAA and all that to help me through and sponsorship. I had to rely on someone else that's been there that co I couldn't bullshit. I picked one of the, I picked an ex-biker to, to help me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you, you're you not going to bullshit me, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he, was, he was like, uh, he's not going to, I didn't know who he was, right? When I went to the program, it was like, you know, I wanted the roughest and toughest person. And I knew I couldn't bullshit. So, I mean, when I did that, it was like, well, now I have to start being honest with myself. Oh, well, how does that work? Because mm -hmm. you know, you're not honest with yourself, obviously, when you're drinking and drugging and doing what else. You're basically sitting in your own shit, pardon my language, but you're sitting in your own shit. And that stool is comfortable because you don't know anything else in years. Because you stopped growing when you used. So the maturity level is like, what do I do? And when you're asking for the help, you don't want to feel embarrassed asking for the help. You don't want to sit there and say, well... Hey, I, I'm not a man no more and I need help. It doesn't work like that. If you need help, just get the help. Never mind the BS of what people think of you. The more you listen, people sit there and say, oh, they think of me, they think of me, they think of me. Listen, if you know how often they actually thought of you, you wouldn't really wouldn't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then the resentments will kick in. Mm -hmm. All right. Resentments will kick in. And if you're not careful, uh, that'll kill you. That and expectations, because resentments is what that is, is like peeing down your own leg. You're the only one that feels it. Nobody else feels it. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, you're you're thinking that this person's thinking this and thinking that. They're not thinking that at all. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> you know, or you think everybody's talking about you. For instance, in the baseball game, how many people are in there? 50,000 or so? In a baseball game, there's a guy up top there, just to give a little hint to everybody out here. The guy up top there hollered down and says, hey, George, the guy down at the front row, the very front row by the uh, the boxer gets up, looks around, so, you know, who the hell's yelling? <laughs> Next thing you know, gets down three, four innings later, guy gets back up. Hey, George, this guy gets up again, <laughs> looking around. He can't figure out who's calling, right? Next thing you know, ninth inning comes by and he yells up, hey, George. This guy stands up. My name's not George. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, everybody's thinking about you all of a sudden. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it's a simple way of looking at the the disease. I call mm -hmm. it the disease. Mm -hmm. So you know, you went from that, then you went into a space where you were actually helping people with that, but then it was time to do something new. So yeah, how did you go from being a therapist? into business well it just seemed okay there was one guy to come up to me it was 2005 
he come up to me and says, Robert, I, I would like to learn how to do a book. And that was my first book I put out there in 2007. So he says, I like to learn how to do a book. So we did a book. I taught him how to do a book. And he actually become an international bestseller, number one bestseller, right? And he was like, wow, I never even become a bestseller at that time. Mm -hmm. right? And he's like, you helped me do this. I'm thinking, well, I didn't even know what I did to do it. <laughs> like when you when you told me that you asked me to help me do it, I just did it because I was asked. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was actually doing because when I wrote my first book, I mean, it was just, it was a fog to me. And I learned that I was a better teacher to others than I was to myself. Mm -hmm. right, so that's when I said, well, obviously a coach is going to help me because I, I'm too foggy and too, I can't understand the way to do it. So when you say, how do I do this? Always look at a coach and say, how? They're the how. Mm -hmm. right? They're the how. They're the guidance. They're the one to move you forward. So that person actually ended up being working for Jack Canfield and then did a forward for me. And then when that forward went out, it just boom it, that book just flew out there <laughs> and you know so it, it changed a bit of things in my life because of the connections and then i got to be on stage with jack canfield and a bunch of them i was just asked today but all the all the, the world organization of natural medicine uh the head person the person that owns it wants me to do a, an event with them they want they want me to start coaching the, the doctors i said okay we'll talk <laughs> Yeah, a, a, so, a new avenue for you. What's that? A new avenue, a new thing to do. Well, I get bored fast, so I might as well do something, right? That's right. <laughs> you know, like I, I got a lot going on right now, the lot we haven't talked about yet, but mm -hmm. it, it's coming. You know, I mean, yeah. it's coming. I, I got a new book that's coming out. It's called Resilience. Obviously, we talked about how my life was mm -hmm. and how my life is today being featured in Forbes, Guinness World Record, and the different things. So it's definitely resilience, mm -hmm. but it's resilience uh, based on a true story of Robert J. Moore. Exactly. Yeah, so so yeah. and that's, yeah, one of the reasons we're here today. I just wanted people to kind of know you so that yeah. we didn't just say, here's a book. So <laughs> yes, there's a book and a movie. Yeah, I'm Coming actually got picked up for the contract. Together. Yes. So it's what funny how this happened because I end up being sponsored to do a TV show. Robert J. Moore TV show mm -hmm. and it's on Roku and, and Apple and all that all the 196 different places uh, different countries and that and all of a sudden they they said to me you know your story is so amazing you know can you picture yourself ever having a movie out there with your story and I said I said that'd be a dream come true and I, I was just joking mm -hmm. I was just joking because I mean you know how you sit around and say oh that'd be gorgeous that'd be nice that'd be you know like you're just kind of openly talking well this person's being serious and I didn't take it that way. I didn't see it that way. They said, listen, all you have to do is say the word. I will contact you within minutes with with a screenwriter. And you guys can start. But I want to be on the call because I'm the investor. I want to be on the call. So, and so I spent an extra 10 hours a week, three days a week, right? Putting the screenwriting down. And we did it within a month. So I was doing 110 hours a month or 110 hours a week per for the month. And I got myself pretty sick doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we got it done. And now we're working on who's going to be in the movie. I can't really say on tape right now who exactly because we haven't signed anybody yet. Mm -hmm. But we got some pretty big names coming in. And then I got on the uh, New York Times billboard. Uh, when I got up on the billboard there, flashing about resilience, the book coming out. And uh, mm -hmm. the investor said, okay, that seals the deal for $17 million. Let's work on the 13 million. So the 13 million is based on who's coming in, who's going to agree to come in. I know Reggie Rusk, he said, yes. He said, Robert, I'll be there hundred mm percent. -hmm. You know, he's from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm -hmm. uh, Florida Buccaneers, pardon me. And then uh, Les Brown's two children, Serena Brown and Patrick, uh, they, they said, Robert, we're in, <laughs> you know, so they definitely uh, are going to be in and a few other high end people like that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And is it going to be like like a biography where they just start at the beginning and go over, you know, go over? Here's what you're going to love. Here's what you're going to love. You're going to sit there and see a room. The movie's going to start like this. You're going to see this here award here. It's about the, uh, the you're going to show everybody. It's a Forbes Council, right? Coaching. Uh -huh. Okay. This thing here is going to be handed to me at the at the very end of the movie where I'm going up on stage, I got the tux on and I got the black tie and there's going to be a thousand people in the room.
but you're going to see me walking up. When you see me walking up to the stage and I start buttoning up my shirt, smiling at people, all of a sudden it does a flashback. That flashback does the movie. All right. Now the movie gets over. So when you see the one person go as a young me in jail, because I did 17 years, right? So basically it's going to show the one person going up to the jail. When he goes to turn the corner, it's going to stop that young person and the older person is going to start from there. So it's going to flash right into the older person to, to make it visual. Okay, he did the 17 mm -hmm. years now. Mm -hmm. All right. So then at the very end, once that's all done, it goes back to me being on that out there doing up the button and walking up on stage i'll grab my wife and my kids we'll get up on stage i'll be handed this and we'll just kind of go like that and you know and that'll be it for that movie wow. but it's going to be yeah it's going to walk through all the years i did in jail all the stupidity things i did the car crash where people died in my hands uh, my wife died in my hands 1992 the mother of my two kids uh and and the turmoil that i went through the drugs and alcohol the fights and I had 36 assault charges, armed robberies, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, I, I don't have a criminal record no more, mm -hmm. but I mean, I, I was, I was an interesting character. I was trying to look at, fill in that voice any which way I could, and that's definitely not the way to go, guys. Please don't go that way. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, and, and that's a good question, actually. You know, there's so many people going through life, and they do have this void that they need filled with something i know for for me i'm a person of faith so i fill that with god and my faith and my family i didn't believe in god back then i used to think god was the one punishing me mm. you know what i mean like i'm not where I'm, I'm dead serious i used to think god was punishing me then when i went to if you ever know those alcoholics anonymous or, or, or uh narcotics anonymous they're all in the church Mm -hmm. on the bottom of church that used to bother me because i blame god right mm -hmm. so then I, I go there and that they say use good orderly direction or whatever you want to use whatever it can be i just basically looked around the room i'm a i'm i'm a watcher i'll watch around the room and i'll say okay well this guy was sicker than a dog like last week so basically when i came in it was like i was throwing up in buckets i was literally throwing up that was in this side here the guy would put like apple juice and, and an egg right to help me out he put an egg in there right the healthy stuff or and then like basically water in this hand so if i puked i could rinse it out mm -hmm. so basically i drink it and i throw up in the bucket then i do this and it'd be over and over and i said can we not just pour it in the bucket it's easier <laughs> <laughs> so he says no because every time you do it this much more gets in your system uh-huh Okay, I understand that. So basically what you're saying is keep coming back and not much more will happen to you know, help you out. So basically I'm a watcher. I'm looking at people. So I'm starting to see other people get healthy, but I'm not seeing me get healthy. Mm. But I'm doing the steps. I'm doing the work. I'm doing the things. Now, let me tell you something. They always say keep Alcoholics Anonymous anonymous. That's not how it really is. Okay, people might have the theory of it wrong. Is keep the people that are going there not. They don't want people sitting there saying, okay, I went two days and it didn't work. I'm drunk again. They want the honest people like myself and many others to sit there and, and tell the true story. I went there. Yes, it worked for me because I wanted it to work. I didn't go there because I was forced to and it didn't work for me. That's why they say keep it anonymous because if, it, if something don't work for you, you tried, you failed. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to do, you didn't want to turn yourself over to the way that the way it really is right now they say if you don't go to means to stay sick well i still do the work i don't have to go to means i still do the work i was actually working in the field day in day out for 15 years i'm 17 years clean sober now i still hold the faith now i believe in god i did the sinner's prayer boy i tell you oh, what a trip that was <laughs> got a lot to be, a lot to ask forgiveness for <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it, even today uh give send go the uh the money place where you ask for give send go you ask for charity mm -hmm. um i'm doing the movie right now and I, i'm asking for a hundred thousand if people want to donate they donate enough they could probably be a, a, a stand-in or something you know what i mean mm -hmm. so they actually called me up today and they're very much a christian uh place so they said someone wanted to send you a prayer 
And I said, well, let's hear it. I, I, let's hear it. I, I have no problem with that. So they did. That was only about an hour ago. Uh -huh. And I said, Man, that, what a good feeling that is. Before, when you said the word God, I'd balk it. Mm -hmm. I'd feel like, oh, I'd, feel, I'd tighten up. And I'd, oh, my God, this is awful. But I don't no more. Yeah. You know, plus, I, I'm married into a Christian family. Even though I'm not going to say I'm perfect. Oh, no, 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 no perfectness. My mother-in-law states straight up forward. She'll tell you this right to your face. She'll, she says, straight up forward, one of these days, God's going to take care of your tongue. And I swear, like a trucker at times. <laughs> and I said, listen, here's the way it works. He takes away that. That's my personality, and I'm gone. No, nope, I'll keep it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, I, I'm doing the best I can with the rest of everything else. Let's, mm -hmm. Let me have my personality. I was going to say, I don't think God requires our personalities. He <laughs> requires us, but he doesn't require our personalities. <laughs> she just wants me to tone down the language at times. Uh -huh. well, sometimes, sometimes I don't care where I am. And if I got something to say, I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. and it's, it but it's it's tangible. I got something to back it up. You know what I mean? So I, mean, I can prove it. Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher. He said a few things one time when we're on the phone together. And I, I told him straight goods. And he's like, oh, okay. Never thought that about that one. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. So funny. So um, your movie, so you're, it's in the process right now. Yeah, we just, we're doing the funding. We're doing the, the script. We're doing the, uh, you know, who's going to be where, who's going to do what. And, you know, I have to identify all the people that were in my life. Um, all the people that were in the jail cell with me at the time, which we identified, there was three murderers, one guy for DUI, and then myself at 18 years old, mm -hmm. right? So it was, you know, there's only five to a cell on that range. Mm -hmm. So we've done all that. We've done all the other doctors, nurses, and that. I'm doing all the different script writing right now on the back scenes of it. And who we're going to put into it as me, a younger me, older me. And I mean, like the list goes on. I mean, look, and there's, there's a big list here. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And that's just people we use to fill in. The people on there are the ones that actually will bring more money in. Um, plus, we're looking at product placement. Product placement, a lot of people don't understand what that means. I just learned what it meant myself, so I can at least elaborate on that a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hypothetically, say Molson Canadian, the beer. If mm -hmm. they want to put that beer in there, because I used to drink that beer, if they want to place that beer in there and make it look like it's seen, then they pay me money as a sponsor, and I put that beer in there. It's called product placement. Or mm -hmm. Harley Davidson, I'll wear some of their shirts or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 because there is a lot of bikers that we have to throw in this movie, um, it might be a good idea to call them and say, hey, you know, let's let's use some of your stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and they might throw in that two hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever, right? Or a thousand or a million dollars. It depends. It depends on what we work with. Um, it could be, I know Wom just asked me, how can we work together? How can we do something? And I said, well, give me a chunk of money. I'll, I'll have, you know, maybe your books in there or something. Maybe I'll have your t-shirt, you know, wear your t-shirt. It, it's, it's so easy to do, to do product placement. Just don't get me to wear, uh, just don't get me to wear salmon. You know, the color salmon. <laughs> you know? Not your Not color. Happy. <laughs> it's not your it, it, it doesn't give me any kind of glow at all no <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i mean uh, i don't think people realize the amount of work it takes just to even begin that project much less go through with the the whole thing from top to bottom yeah believe it or not it only takes about a month to do the screenwriting of it but at the same time, the in-between stuff, you got to get the music, got to get the rights for the music, got to get the, the rights for, okay, we're using this person, that person. We got to get them to sign all the paperwork. We got to get the sponsorship. They got to be on the ball. They got to do. People are flying in from different parts of the world to go to California to meet up with my team to see about investing. They're flying around the world to sit down and have a dinner and, and, and talk about investments with me. I mean, like, I can't get out of Canada right now because they still got us tightened up, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm the kind of person, and I, I'll say it myself, I don't believe in getting the job, and I won't, right? That's just my thing. I don't want to do it. I work at home. I work on, on my property and my family. I don't I don't want them to go through it either, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and you know what? And that's just my thing. So, I can't get out of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, not yet, but they're supposed to be loosening things up. But at the same time, if you know, 
this government out here and the way he's been working, he's always got something to tighten it up again. So I won't I won't discriminate him, but I I think we all got our opinions of him, and I'm not going to say it on here. <laughs> okay. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> That's not what this is about anyways. <laughs> Save that for a political podcast or something. <laughs> I, yeah, I won't be doing no political nothing. There. No, I got enough politics in my business. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. So um, now how old your little boy now? He's going on four and a half years old. Four and a half. Uh, Have you told him daddy's going to be in a movie? Well, I tell you, he's very smart. He's very intelligent. I mean, he, he the other day, he was sitting there playing in water or whatever it was. And, and I never even knew the word density. I don't know what it meant. I have no uh -huh. clue. I never had to use that word before. Uh -huh. Right? He's talking about density. But, the you know, I, and I said, what the heck does that mean? My wife was standing there. She laughs at me. And she goes, well, density. But, the, you know, if it's floating or if it's not floating. Uh -huh. And he was playing in the water. And I said, well, I, you taught something to daddy. Because I have no clue what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was told he was uh, he was highly intelligent, mm -hmm. which he is. He's more advanced, and uh, he could sit down when he was one years old, like one and a half at the most. He would do the alphabets out. He would put it all in a line with blocks and and show me how it's done. He count to a hundred, mm -hmm. count count backwards from thirty down, you know. And, and it's amazing the stuff we we just sit there and read to him, and he keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's interesting little guy, but he's. He's hyper at nighttime because what happens with children is um, they turn their energy, their, their tiredness into energy and become hyper, mm -hmm. right? It's not chocolate. It's not nothing else like that because you don't have to give them that for that to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? So <laughs> it's just a matter of putting them on a proper routine again and uh, give them the proper sleep he needs. So that, that is like, I, so regular bedtime is good for kids. <laughs> Oh, look at this right here. This is his little bed he had today down here. Oh, nice. So he's got all he he wants to he wants to spend time with me. No problem. Come out, lay down. You got your you know your whatever you got your educational stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, his tablet. He likes playing on the tablet. It's very education. So we don't have TV. I don't let TV in my house. I have TVs. Don't get me wrong. I got like seventy five inch TV in each room. <laughs> and, and it's like. Okay, well, what do we watch on? We watch it while well, we do Netflix or we do YouTube or something like that. But it's all educational stuff for him. Mm -hmm. um, the other day, for instance, here, here's a smarty pants kind of thing. Now, I don't know half time what he watches, okay? I'm always working and doing things like that. That's a wife's thing. I mean, I, I don't know. I retired the wife years ago. She wanted to raise the kids. I said, no problem. That, that, that's fine with me. So I, I put on a cartoon that I thought was uh, legitimate for him. He says, Daddy, he says, you go ahead, you watch that because I'm a, not a baby no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I, think good. It was, I think it was time to get something a little bit more mature for him to watch. And then I did that and he was okay. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So anyways, back to the movie. Do we have a uh possible date or when what are we we're looking starting at? to film we're starting to film at uh february roughly it's going to be a canadian we're doing it all in canada um it's not going to be a canadian made movie like the ones you see the cheaper ones we're going high end um so we're, we've got people that are going to be we're renting a mansion basically and what we're going to do is we're just going to put everybody in the house i've got cooks coming and chefs coming people to, to help us out People to do laundry for us, people to do whatever we need. So hypothetically say, I'll name one person, Eric Eric uh, Roberts, when he comes down, uh, he'll have his own room, his, uh, his own stuff, and and whatever he may be. But uh, yeah, he's supposedly uh, been asked to play in the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. So. <laughs> Beautiful. So how can we keep up to date on what's going on? Do you have a website or where, where do we keep up with you? Well, if you Google Robert J. Moore, you can't miss me. If you Google a magnetic <laughs> entrepreneur, you can't miss me. But honestly, if, if you, I usually use my Facebook a lot more than anything. So mm -hmm. if you do Robert J. Moore on Facebook and under, beside that, you see magnetic entrepreneur. That's one thing. Plus, I, I've hired people from the Phil Philippines to actually work for me. They're doing a lot of posting on a magnetic entrepreneur business one where I got like 40, 50,000 people on there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use my YouTube as much as I used to, 
there's about 40, maybe 30, 40,000 on there. But altogether, I think I got like 200,000 followers. And that's just rough estimate. Um, might be low, but that's okay. Um, but when you look at the situation, it's Robert J. Moore. People follow me a lot on there. I don't even know they're following me, to be honest with you. I just had a very, a very famous uh, lady get a hold of me. You might know her. I mean, I, I, I know country. I don't really know her to per se too much. Yeah, right here, Amy Scraggs, Scruggs. She, she, she was wants to do a podcast with me not long from now. She got a hold of me the other day. She goes, "You're amazing, Robert." And I said, "Me? I'm amazing. Hello." <laughs> you know, like you've done, you've done, you've done amazing. What are you talking about me? Yeah, she's from Nashville, recording artist, and you know, like wow, it's pretty cool. And then, like I said, I'm 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 uh, supposed to be being looked at for uh, the other country singer. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Kelly Clarkson, her show. So I got a few good shows out there uh, that are coming my way, and then probably uh, City TV in Toronto. And there's a few. There's mm -hmm. a few I'm looking at. Yeah. And then you're you're still doing your coaching and publishing. I I have a publishing. Yeah, I publish books all the time. If people want to do their books for me, I get. Right now, I get a huge discount, huge discount. I get 55% off for the rest of the year. Um, people get in for like 14, 1500 bucks. I think it is. Everything included. Your, your cover, your editing, everything. Everything's included. 1500 US. It's mm -hmm. all on my website, uh, magneticentrepreneur.com. Right? It's all there. You can't miss it. Uh, Magnetic-entrepreneur, you know. Um, yeah. It's it's huge. You know, and then if they want to do collaboration on the book, it's 475 you know, they can also do that, but they can also put the, the, I do mine differently from other people. What I do is allow people, as you know, you put a bio in there, that mm -hmm. bio advertises the person. Mm -hmm. So it gives mm -hmm. them an extra, it gives them that extra one, two, when they're actually talking, oh, well, I can read the book, but I get to put a bio in there too. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I've been in some of those books and, you know, sometimes some of the best connections are the other people in the book. I mean, I'll go through and read the yeah. book and I'm like, I got to connect with this person and this person. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you know, and not only that, I mean, most of my books do become international bestsellers. Uh, and there's no two ways about it. It's just the way I do things. Uh, I put things out there quite nicely and I'm all about upbranding other people. So if I see someone that really needs an upper hand, I usually put someone that's pretty famous on the cover as, as doing a forward in order to help that the group out. It's just like when I got this Guinness World Record right here. I got that for signing 126 people for the Guinness World Record, signing simultaneously at the same time. People think, well, how's everybody get one book and then put arms around each other to do it? And I said, mm -hmm. no, I had to be unique in order to do it. I sat on a team like this here, but there was 12 people at the Guinness World Record. Every time I sat on that team, I had to pay $1,000. And they, they, the first time they said, nope, not good enough. Second time, nope, not good enough. Third time, not good enough. I said, okay, I have one last chance. I said, listen, okay, you guys want me to be unique. I got it. I mm -hmm. said, I never even thought of this. I'm a publisher. I'll publish the whole thing myself. Mm -hmm. I'll put a book together. I'll put the book together and I'll put 126. Actually, I put 150 people in the book. I'm just going to put their bios. Ah. So I, all I did was put their bios in there and then they become an author. Uh huh. Oh my goodness. Right? Yeah. So now they become an author. Now I break down and I, I put that book together. I get the uh, permission for the cover. And then what, what happens from there is I print it off so that everybody in the room has an individual book. So now we're all separate together, all 126 people. We have three seconds to open <laughs> our thing up and just sign it. When we sign it, we put it up like this. And that's all this. That's wow. all it was. That is awesome. But it was very costly too. I'm not going to kid yourself. And the lady that came down to do it, she was nasty. She was nasty. I mean, she she started. She was looking for ways to fail me. Amazing. Like literally looking for ways to fail me, and and I wasn't allowing the fail to happen. I just I knew what was happening. I could read her like a book. I mean, I did therapy for a lot of times. I had done many therapy with other people for a lot of years, and you know, so I could read her like a book. And I wasn't letting her. I, she heard me when she was leaving. She heard me too. I said, "Thank God that she's going out that way because you know, <laughs> I don't know if I can tolerate this much more." Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> wow. So, wow. But I won. I won. But at the same time, listen, when I actually won that, I actually had COVID at the time, 
I was throwing up blood. I could hardly uh, eat anything. I, I was cold. I had the hot chills, cold sweats. And you know what? But I, when I put my word out there, I'm going to help do something and empower other people. That's what I'm doing. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> so taking a look at everything from the beginning, where you started to now, you know, you've kind of been at both ends. And one of the questions I ask people at the end of every podcast is, what is your best advice on living an amazing, incredible life? Stop living the way you're living because uh, you're only guiding yourself and start getting the proper coach to actually guide you the proper way. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being on today. <laughs> Any last words? It's just an honor to be here. And you know what? If anybody wants to be a, a, a step in and a, a fill in or whatever for the movie, you know what? They can go through you or they can get a hold of me at Robert J. Moore um, or they could do Magnetic Publishing uh, 2017 at gmail.com. All right. Well, thank you so much, Robert. I well, appreciate it. Yep. We'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> All right. Cheers. God bless.